Hello everyone. What we're talking about in this video is random variables and mean value. This is used all of the time in statistics. We're going to explain what it is, how it's written, and we're going to go over notation, which is also very widely used. It'll help you with everything that follows this video. So to figure out what is a random variable, we're actually going to talk about two things. What is a variable and what is random? And we're going to start with variable. That's the easier thing to explain because people tend to be familiar with it. Okay? A variable, it's a mathematical object that can take on different values. So for example, we can write y equals 2x. x and y are variables. We're not assigning a specific value to either of them. They can take on different values, but there are certain restrictions. Specifically, y is twice as big as x, right? So if x is three, well then y is going to be two times three, y is going to be six, right? If x is 10, well then y is going to be 20, and so on. And this is usually what people think when they hear variable, right? They think an unknown in an equation. So what is random, okay? So usually when people think of random, they think, okay, let's say there's random dots on the screen. What would that look like? Well, some people think, okay, so it's like evenly spaced dots, right? Random dots on the screen. Uh, that's actually not random at all. That's a very strict structure. Each dot is in a certain grid location and so on. Uh, if you're putting random dots on the screen, then you have no way of predicting where the next dot is going to be. It might be right here, or it might be right here, right next to another dot or somewhere else. So in mathematics, we use a, a very specific definition. If a process is random, it means you cannot predict the next event based on the previous events. That's what random means, okay? You cannot predict the next event based on the information you obtained from the previous events. So a random variable is a variable such that you cannot predict its next value based on the previous values. I'm gonna write that down. Random variable is a variable for which one cannot predict the next value based on the previous values. So, for example, rolling a dice. You have a dice with six sides, you roll it and you get a five. And then you roll it again and you get a two. And you roll it again and you get a one. And you roll it again, you get a two again. So you've generated four random values. Can you use that information that you rolled a five, then a two, then a one and a two, can you use that information to predict what the fifth roll will be? No, you cannot. There's no way to predict the next value based on the previous values. So your outcome when rolling a dice is a random variable. Let's say you're surveying people and you're asking them, what's your salary? Okay, you ask one person and they say 20,000 and you ask the next person and they say 80,000 and you ask the next person and they say 45,000 and you ask the next person and they say 150,000. So you ask four people. Can you use that information to predict what the fifth person's salary is? The fifth person you walk up to? No, you can't, right? You can't use the answers of the previous four people to, to predict what the fifth person will say. So when you're surveying people, when you're doing measurements, 
uh, very often that's also a random variable, right? You can come up with a situation where you're measuring something in a very systematic way where you can't actually predict the next outcome, but usually it's also a random variable. That's why it's used so much in statistics. Now, how do we write down random variables, right? If we're using math as a hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic language, well, we usually have a letter most favorite letter for a variable is X. And then you have a subscript that represents which generated value of the random variable are we talking about. So for example, X1 is your first value. First value of the random variable. In our dice situation, that would be a five, right? X2 is your second value. Okay, in our dice situation, that would be a two. X3 is your third value, and so on. So in our dice situation, that would be a one. Okay, so we have x1 equals 1 in the third situation, sorry, x3 equals 1, x2 equals 2, x1 equals 5 in the example of rolling the dice above. Right? Now we also use the letter n to represent the number of data points. n is the total number of data points. Total number of data points. So let's say you're doing a survey and you ask a thousand people. Well, then n is equal to a thousand. Let's say you're rolling a dice 15 times and looking at the result. Well, then n is equal to 15. Whatever you're looking at, n is the total number of data points, right? So let's say n is equal to 15, okay? You rolled the dice 15 times and looked at the result, right? So how many data points do you have? 15 data points. So if you want to refer to your last data point, you can write X with a 15 subscript, right? So that means your 15th data point, which also happens to be your last data point because you only have 15 data points. But if you had say a hundred data points, well then X 15 would not be your last data point. It would be your 15th data point, right? So if n equals 100, well then x with a subscript 100 would mean your last data point because that is the 100th data point. But there is a way that you could say your last data point regardless of how many data points you have. And that's x with a subscript n. Right? That means last data point. Because whatever n is, that's the number of your last data point. If you have a thousand data points, n is a thousand. If you have 32 data points, n is 32. So x with a subscript n means your last data point. Now, there is another piece of notation, which is to say a data point. We're not saying which one, just some particular data point. In conversation, you could say a data point can be da 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 da, and you're not naming the data point. And that's x with a subscript i, a data point. So we're referring to some particular data point, but we're not saying which one, just a data point. And the i can represent whatever number, right? One, two, three, and we're not specifying the number. So you have x with the substrate of a number, which refers to a particular data point, right? The first data point, the second, the third. N is the total number of data points. X with a subscript N is your last data point, and X with a subscript I is a data point, just some data point, but we're not specifying which one. So we talked about random variables. We talked about how it means you cannot predict the next value based on the previous values. Like in our example here, okay, the top example with dice, 
the bottom example with income. But even though we cannot predict the exact value, we can still expect a certain number. Let's say we don't know that we're talking about dice. We don't know that we're talking about income. We just are observing some random variable and we observe a five and then we observe it becomes a two. And then next value is a one and next value is a two. We cannot predict what the fifth value is, but we can say that, well, we expect it to be somewhere in the low single digits, right? Probably it's not going to be 90,000, right? It might be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, maybe a six, maybe a zero, somewhere in that range. That's what we expect, right? Looking at these numbers, maybe we expect like it to be around three-ish, right? So when we look at the income, 20,000, 80,000, 45,000, 150,000, if, even if we don't know we're talking about income, we can still expect that it's not going to be a three, right? It's not going to be a three. So it might be around 50,000, 50, 60,000, 60, right? We expect a value like that. And what we're doing there when we approximate in our heads, we're actually subconsciously calculating the average or something close to the average. Intuitively, we have an idea of what it should be. Now, the technical term for the average is the mean value. We also call it the expected value because when observing a random variable, you expect the next value, the value you cannot predict, you expect it to be somewhere around the mean. So what is the mean value? Well, you may have heard the average is adding up all of the values and dividing by the number of values. So we have a symbol that we use for mean value and that is the lowercase Greek M, which is pronounced mu. It looks like that. And it means add up all of the values. So X1 plus X2 plus X3 and so on, all the way up to the last value, Xn. And then you divide by the number of data points. That's the mean value or the average value. Now, when we write it like this, it takes a lot of space. It takes a lot of ink if you're writing with ink and it takes a lot of hope, right? You hope that the reader understands what's going on right here between the X3 and the XN, right? Cause we kind of say, and so on, you know what I'm talking about. And hopefully they know what we're talking about. We know what pattern they want them to continue here. It's not a very convenient way of writing things down, especially when we get into more complicated mathematics. So there's another useful symbol, which is called the summation symbol. So this symbol, sigma, uppercase Greek S, it means add up everything in front. Whatever is written in front of the symbol, that's what has to be added up. So what has to be added up is the data points. Which data points? Well, all of them, right? So not some particular data point, all of them. And below the summation symbol, we write what that index I starts at, and above we write what it ends at. So what this means is add up the data points from the first one to the last one. That's what that symbol means. Add up all of the data points from the first one to the last one, right? So that's that's why it's all the data points. Add up the data points, which data points? From the first one to the last one. And what do we do after we add them up? Well, we divide by the number of data points. Okay. That is the mean value. And that's how you write it using technical mathematical notation. That's how you write it in these hieroglyphics that we call mathematics. So, for example, let's say your data points are x1 equals 2, x2 equals 3, let's say we're rolling a dice, x3 equals 5, x4 equals 3 again, and x5 equals 
1. So we've rolled the dice five times and we want to calculate our mean value. So our mean value will require us to add up the data points from the first one to the last one and divide by the number of data points. Number of data points here is 5. Right? n equals 5. So we're going to add them all up. 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 and we're going to divide by 5. We can add an extra step here. right? Add up the data points from the first one to the fifth one and divide by five, right? We're just inputting n equals five. Then we end up what's in the bottom here. And so we have five plus two is five, five and five is 10, three and one, we have 14 divided by five. Quick trick to divide by five, just divide by 10 and then multiply by two. Okay. So 1.4 times two and that's gonna give you 2.8. So our mean value, the average of all of our rolls, is 2.8. The actual mean value of rolling a dice is 3.5, if you're interested. So that's mean value, and that's what random variables are, that's the technical notation. So hopefully that helps, and enjoy the rest of the material.